Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Muskegon on this Palm Sunday. Today is also called Passion Sunday. Passion comes from the Greek word paskain, which means to suffer. And so as you might imagine, Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday combined together is a Sunday of mixed emotions. We begin with the celebration and the joy as we commemorate Jesus' triumph triumphal entry into Jerusalem as people waved their palm branches and laid their cloaks down before him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But Jesus in his heart knew all that awaited him there. And we contemplate that throughout the service until we come to the end with a more somber and solemn note. Join us now as we worship together and let's be called to worship now. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Who is this unlikely king? Hosanna, his name is Jesus. Why does he ride into the city? Hosanna, he comes to save us. Let us wave our palms, throw down our cloaks, and follow Christ towards the cross. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins to God, whose steadfast love endures forever. We confess that we have sinned, and although we would like to deny it, we have forsaken you. We are horrified by the suffering we cause. 
to you, ourselves, and to the world you created. Open the gates of your forgiveness and restore us in your love. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Receive the declaration of forgiveness. The Lord God helps us, we will not be disgraced. The Lord God helps us, who will declare us guilty? Sisters and brothers, beyond the shadow of doubt, your sins are forgiven. By the mercy of Christ, let us stand together, forgiven and free. And now we'll join the younger church for Lizzie the Warrior. A scripture to share with you, friends, from Psalms 118, verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. <laughs> In other words, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love lasts forever. <laughs> I'm just full of thanks. I've actually started writing thanks you know it's to God for all the things he has done for me and for you. Wow, have you ever received a thank you card in the mail? Or has someone ever sent you or given you a thank you card? Don't you feel so special when you get a card from someone? Yeah, I love receiving cards from friends and I thought, hmm, would love to get a card from me saying thanks for just being a friend. God does so much for us. He provides everything we need. So it's important that we stop and say thank you. So Psalms 118 helps us to remember to stop and say thank you to God for all the many things. For life, for hmm, creation, friends, for family. Let's all thank God now. Thank you, God! <laughs> yeah. Well, friends, I love God. I thank God for you and for everyone. And I love sharing scripture with you that helps us to love each other and love God more. Bye! I know that many of you start your day saying, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That verse comes from Psalm 118, which happens to be the psalm that the New Testament quotes more than any other psalm. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. It look, lifts up God's abundant and steadfast love that never, ever fails. It's a psalm of thanksgiving because it talks about people who were near death, near being wiped out, and God rescued them and brought them back. And so it's a song that brings exultation. But there's a hint of it that there is still suffering involved. It talks about the stone that was rejected was thrown away by the builders, but it has now become the chief cornerstone. This lays the groundwork for much of the theology of the, the New Testament. So let's listen in to Psalm 100, 118, verses 1, 2, and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. We beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is good, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches 
up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Today's gospel reading comes at a turning point in Mark's gospel. Up until this point, whenever Jesus was recognized by anyone as being Messiah, he told people not to tell anyone that about him. But now, Jesus will take that role, and he rides into the city triumphantly, knowing the consequences that are to come. Let's listen now for Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread out their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we pray together. Gracious and kind God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, reach each of our hearts and minds and help us to use our thoughts and our imaginations to be engaged by your word in ways that cause us to wonder, to marvel, and to praise. Lord God, take us into Holy Week with the appropriate mix of emotions where we celebrate, but we also understand the somberness of what is to come. Help us to understand what to do with that in our walk of discipleship, that we might trust you more completely. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We worship in a day of irony, as I mentioned earlier, the mixed emotions of the celebration followed by what is to come. Irony is one of the great blessings that we find in the scriptures. I mentioned when it said, the stone that was rejected by the builders has now become the chief cornerstone. Think of how that theme has repeated itself throughout scripture. Think of Joseph, whose brothers sold him into slavery, rejected him, and left him for dead. And what happened? He became the savior to the families, many families of the earth because he became a leader in Egypt and was able to prepare them for the famine that was to come. He became an archetype for Jesus' salvation. The one who was rejected became the chief cornerstone. When this psalm was first chanted and sung, it probably was referring to Israel itself as the stone that was rejected by the builders, for they had been through exile into Babylon, tossed away and given up for dead. But God did not give up on them. In fact, God had great plans, great plans to make Israel the nation through whom the Messiah would come, to bless not only them, but to bless all the families of the earth as was promised in the first covenant. In this psalm, there was a sacrifice that was made. It said, as they came, blessed is the, the 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus followed in that pattern, calculatedly so. When he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, he came from the Mount of Olives. It was thought that if Jerusalem was ever to be taken militarily, that's where the military uh, battle would begin, starting from the Mount of Olives. But Jesus rode in humbly on a donkey. A donkey was a sign of peace, a sign that uh, a prince or a ruler was coming in peace, not on a horse, but uh, on the humble colt. The people recognized this, and they shouted to their coming king, Hosanna, save us. It was an oppressed people that Jesus was coming to in Jerusalem, a people that he wept over, and he knew that there was more suffering to come. The closest I think I've ever come to feeling a culture that is so oppressed that they have basically given up hope or are afraid even to hope was when I traveled to Mexico in the 90s. We went to a place called Magdalena de Quino. And this was a poor city. And we visited those who worked in the maquiladoras, the factories, that uh, people that worked uh, for just a dollar or so a day. We stayed in their homes and they were so generous and loving and wonderful and kind. But when we tried to get their perspective on how things could hope for change like we were hoping for change, they didn't have that same motivation that we did. They didn't have that same belief that things could get better. And it made our hearts ache for them because they seemed resigned to always be in the situation that they were in, in poverty and oppressed we learned a story about one of their heroes, a presidential candidate who went by the name Colosio. And he came from Magdalena. He became a senator from that area, and he was loved by the people. And for once, they dared to hope. And so they followed uh, Colosio to the point where he became uh, the next in line to become a presidential candidate. And people thought that... Uh, that maybe the, that their time of suffering had come to an end, that maybe there was reason to hope after all. And it was in 1994 that Colosio's own party had him assassinated. And not only Colosio, but after that, the investigators that were sent to investigate the assassination, one by one, were assassinated. Fifteen people were killed. There was a great cover-up and the mystery has never been solved. This was a way that these people were driven down into hopelessness and told not to hope again, and this was the kind of situation that the people in Jerusalem were feeling with Rome occupying them. It was a difficult time, and they, had, they were scared to hope, but when Jesus came healing and teaching and showing signs that people were wondering at, they were like the people at the time in Mexico where their hearts were rising and they were, had ideas that Jesus was the one to come, the Messiah, who would bring the overthrow of the Romans. And so when he came riding into town on the donkey from the Mount of Olives, there was this excitement. There was this hope. And when Jesus came into town, it was anticlimactic. There was no uprising. He didn't call for arms he didn't call for the people to come and rise up against Rome. In fact, it says he just looked around in the temple and went back to Bethany. And the people were feeling crushed again. And as they learned that Jesus was not the kind of Messiah that they expected, their feelings turned. And in their crushed hopes, they became angry. And Jesus walked into the place of Holy Week where he would be handed over betrayed, arrested, and taken to, um, to prison, beaten, put on trial, and eventually taken to the cross. Jesus knew these things were coming, and he did it anyway. The psalm repeats over and over again, the steadfast love of the Lord never fails. Blessed is our God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ends. I'd like to uh, see that, I'd like to remind us that Jesus embodied and enacted that love 
in this very act of riding into Jerusalem and coming forward to, uh, to save the people in the way that they needed saving and not the way that they expected. There is a lot of irony in this day. As we head into Holy Week, I'd like for us to contemplate um, what we, we can do uh, with the mixed emotions of the celebrations and the palm waving and yet knowing what Jesus would have us do. It's our time to put down the palms and pick up our cross and to understand that to get to Easter, we must go through Good Friday as well. As we suffer in our lives and ask questions why that may be, as we uh, corporately suffer through a time of pandemic and through chaos in the world, we can pick up our cross and we can love as God loves. We can love our neighbor as ourselves. And in doing so, we lift up that we are followers of this Jesus who came riding humbly on a donkey, not on a horse, not on a tank, not with weapons of war, but with the greatest weapon of all, love, that disarms all evil. We're invited to take this journey into Holy Week now. And let me invite you on Monday, Thursday to uh, follow a link that we'll put on the screen that our synod has put together. In fact, our presbytery was responsible for the Monday Thursday service with communion that you can participate in on Monday Thursday through the uh, internet. And there's also a wonderful Good Friday service that's been provided by our synod. So let that be a part of your journey. And we look forward then to what God teaches us in our time walking through the darkness together. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to respond to God's word now as we uh, come to God with our prayers. May we bow together. Loving and gracious God, as you come to our world to save us and give us love, we pray that you would put in our hearts the kind of love that gives us courage to walk with you through the celebrations and through the dark times. Lord God, we name people in our hearts who are suffering and in need of your care. We pray your blessing upon those who are awaiting tests, on those who are undergoing treatments, those who need therapy, those who are feeling lonely and afraid. Lord God, let our prayers be a part of their healing and let our gestures be a part where we can touch hearts and minds. Help us to see those opportunities and to meet them. Lord God, we pray for our leaders in this world that you would grant them glimpses of your wisdom. Lord God, that there may be peace and the common good lifted up for all. That where sacrifice needs to be made, that we would learn to do so willingly. Lord God, where there can be uh, people lifted up out of hunger, out of poverty and suffering, that we find ways to lift up all. We pray in your uh, great goodness that you would help us to be agents of peace and change. And as we uh, support with our prayers, we would also do so with our love and our gifts. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and we do so praying together as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue our response to God's word, we are invited to uh, present our offerings, present ourselves with our time, our talents, and our treasure. If you'd like to make a monetary gift to our ministry here at First Presbyterian Church, you may do so. Uh, through postal mail at 2577 Wickham Drive, Muskegon, Michigan, 49441. 
or visit our website at fpcmuskegon.org and click on the Contribute to FPC button. Or finally, you can use the Give Plus app on your smartphone. However you choose to give, we appreciate it very much and know that your gifts will be uh, put to good use as we pursue our mission.
So we come to the end of our service, and we thank you for joining with us. We pray that uh, you were blessed and lifted up by it, and that as you go, your Holy Week experience will be a meaningful one. We look forward to seeing you here live in person or over the internet on uh, our Easter Sunday worship next week. And as we go then, I invite you to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up, lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace now and forevermore. And let God's children say, Amen.